where's the goddamn play? Hi and welcome to um, IT Edits Byte 3. Um, yeah, we seem to be going along still and um, it's been a couple of weeks since we built our domain controller on Hyper-V and uh, I suppose the next step is really adding some clients to it. So Byte 3 is really looking at adding Windows 7 and Windows Vista into the test lab domain and it's really so you know we can do some things with system center operation, oh better check the time, system center operation manager and config manager we can get some you know some decent figures from you know what they're monitoring. So a little bit boring this one and some of you probably know how to do this but just bear with me it'll only be 10 minutes long. What we're just going to go through is just the IP addressing of my test lab. Now my test lab is 192.168.1.0 slash 24. Probably the same as yours. Um, it could be 192.168 something.0 but that's the sort of fairly typical um, network range uh, you have inside your network. What I want to do in this episode is um, just enable RDP access to my server from the internet so I'm just going to go to my router and configure a network address translation just so it forwards port 3389 onto my um, domain controller and later on we can use terminal services yeah, Terminal Services Gateway, and that would be a better solution. Other than that, all I'm going to do is in install Windows 7, the 64-bit edition, and uh, Windows Vista, the 86-bit the edition, the 32-bit edition, and I may install Windows XP if time permits. So that's really the agenda for today, and um, let's get going. Oh, look, look, look at this, guys. Snow Leopard. Hey, hey. So yeah, installed Snow Leopard today, it's looking quite nice. Got all my Exchange Sync working with it well and it's um, looking pretty good uh, from an upgrade as well. Anyway, back onto the lab. So I'm just firing up on my single domain controller. I've got my um, Hyper-V manager open and you can see my Hyper-V host is IHQ-ADDS01. At the moment there's new virtual machine and that I think that virtual machine we left installing at the end of the last episode so yeah we can sort of see that going. I'll, I'll leave that as is for the moment and what I want to do is I want to create myself a new virtual machine. So the first one is going to be for Windows 7 and the name of it, I'll try and keep within my um, name conventions IHQ Win 7-01, that'll do for me. I'm happy to store the virtual machine on drive D, which is my stripe set. And memory wise, I'm just going to give it 1024 during install. I might throttle that back a little bit as I start to run more servers. Uh, clearly, I want it connected to my network. Click on next. Um, that's the name of the virtual hard disk. I'm happy to give it 127 gigabytes. As we saw last week or the week before, these are dynamically expanding disks and you can change these. It's not going to take up 127 gig on my hard disk at the moment. Plus it gives me the versatility of being able to expand that should I want to. So I'm happy to stay with 127. And I'm going to install an operating system from an image file and as I said last week, it's always handy to have your ISOs ready on your on your server. So if I go into ISO and I can see Windows 7 Enterprise and let's just stick that in. And we can see up in the console and I'm just going to click on start and that will go through you know the installation just as if you're booting a physical machine. Now whilst that's getting into grips with itself what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, do a new virtual machine for the Vista machine and we call this IHQ- uh, oh dear, Vist, that would do, day one uh, 1024 to give it about 8 gig really being Vista and all uh, and we'll put it on the local area connection again happy with that disk configuration and we'll install it from the ISO on my drive E which hopefully I put on there Windows Vista where well, it's, it's a version that would do yep 32-bit version cool and we can just kick that one off running now as well and we can see remote desktop allow remote connections from computers running any version of remote desktop that's secure that's fine now remember from yesterday the IP or last week the IP address of this is 192.168.1.100 now that's a private address scheme 
So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go to my router and configure forwarding so that if someone hits the external IP address so here's my router and I'm going to go to port forwarding triggering and what we can see in here is I've got a service name RDP-IHQ-ADS01 start port 3389-3389 and that passes it forward to 192.168.1.100 which means if you hit the external interface of my internet connection on port 3389 you'll be passed through onto 1.100-3389 and that's a, a, a great way to you know, so you can have um, play around screenshots, try things out when you're out and about or at work. Anyway, how's this bloody vista going? Don't turn off. Okay, so that's copying anyway. Okay, so I think I'm going to leave it like this for a little bit. Hopefully I should be able be able to do a little speed up and what I want to show you at the end is just changing the IP addresses, joining to the domain and seeing them in Active Directory use the computers and that will complete the first part of our test lab. We've got the domain controller up and running and we've got two clients in the, the, in the domain. So I shall see you in a little bit. Okay well I'll leave Vista uh, running for the moment and I'm just going to type in We'll get the installation for Windows 7 going. The computer name was IHQ Win 7 01. Uh, password. This is for the initial administrator account, so as they use all recommended settings for updates. Wow, it's got the time zone and I'm currently at my work network. And that's pretty much it for Windows 7 Enterprise. I mean, it's going to give me a screen which you're probably familiar with from uh, installing Server 2008, where I have to change the name of it, change the IP address of it, join a domain, etc. And that's just about to pop up now. So I'm just going to forget about waiting for that wizard to come up and just go through some of these things manually so we change the name that's absolutely fine IP address actually I might be mistaken maybe it's just the um, the welcome screen that comes up on Windows 2008. So we can see the virtual bus adapter has been installed, proving the inter integration components already part of the build. And all I need to do in here is just change the IP address. So we said 192.168.1.11, I think. Who knows? Default gateway is definitely 192.168.1.1. And the DNS server is 192.168.1.100, which is the domain controller we created last time. And now when I join the domain, it should be able to find where the DCs are. So let's go into advanced system settings. There's so many different ways of changing the name and everything. Uh, computer name, I'm going to change here. And say you're a member of a domain, ad.itidiots.com. And it should ask me to authenticate. Administrator. And my usual password. And we should try that one again. Administrator. P -A. And welcome to the IT that's domain. And that's 
pretty much it. I mean, when it reboots, it will be part of the domain, so I'll now have the option to, to log on to the domain.